last six weeks, we know they've been horrific for most tech stocks. As investors turn on their biggest winners and sold them down hard, everything from Fang to the Cloud Kings. But you know what? There are a few exceptions. Tech stocks that got slammed in October and then came roaring back after reporting terrific numbers because the numbers still matter. Consider the case of Kramer Fave Zebra Technologies. This company describes itself as an enterprise asset intelligence play. In plain English, Zebra helps businesses keep track of everything from their inventory to their trucks to where football players are on the field. And they use barcodes, mobile printing, data capture, real-time locating systems, and radio frequency identification to do it all. How has Zebra defied the gravitational pull of its sector? Simple. The company reported a magnificent quarter last week, delivering a 28-cent earnings beat off of $2.67 basis, higher than expected sales, a robust guidance for the next quarter. The company's seeing broad-based demand for the solutions, which is exactly what we want to hear. No wonder the stock surged 6% on the news. It's now up more than 18% since we last spoke to Zebra in May. Can it keep climbing? Let's check in with Anders Gustafsson. He is the CEO of Zebra Technologies. He had a better sense of how his company's doing where it's headed. Mr. Gustafsson, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, Anders. Have Thank a seat. you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, since we've seen you last, You've done a lot of things, including an amazing quarter, but you also made an acquisition of Explore Technologies. I want you to speak to people about what that means and also culturally, because you guys have been exceptional, culturally how you integrate an acquisition because you've done it better than anyone, as we know from a recent article in Chicago Tribune that was quite complimentary. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Ex Explore. So we're very excited about Explore acquisition. It's, it's a, we think of it as a near adjacency to our core business. Okay. It is a, an area where we had some presence, but not as big presence as we felt we should have. Uh, so you think of ta Explore first, they, they make a tablet, a ruggedized tablets. Right. And you know, we are very strong in, in mobile, com uh, mobile computers, the handheld mobile computers. We're the market leader with almost 50% market share. So it's, it's, you can think of tablets here as a, a different form factor of a mobile computer. And the, we tend to see people who are on the front line, they have mobile computers, right. they're supervisors, they have the tablets, but we, we can have the same architecture behind it. So you can say run the same apps and very cost effectively kind of to provide different different form factors for the same, for different oh, people. Oh, so that's easy to integrate, uh, obviously, in terms of hardware, but uh, intellectually, culturally, good fit? Yeah, we think it's a good fit. Uh, you know, we, we culturally say that we, we, we do pay a lot of attention to culture when we right. do acquisitions, and you know, otherwise, too. So when we um, did the enterprise acquisition four, four years ago now, right. you know, four years and a little bit, we you know, probably the most important decision we made almost was the effort we put into creating the common culture. Okay. You know, I said so from a Zebra perspective, we were a smaller company. We didn't necessarily have the right culture to for a much larger organization. Mm -hmm. but so we felt we needed to create an, a new one. So we, we spent uh, uh, a lot of time coming up with our kind of new values, behaviors. So we put 7,000 people through training, two-day training, and we now put the Explore team through the same training. Now, you had great growth globally, yep. including China. Just a strong secular demand for your products in terms of saving money, uh, being efficient for all companies? Yeah, I think we've seen both good, uh, say, uh, cyclical backdrop. Right. The you know, overall macroeconomic uh, backdrop has been good. Uh, and and uh, secularly, you know, very strong. We had good secular drivers in basically all our, our vertical markets. Now, uh, we talked about uh, integration on uh, for e-commerce. I thought that what was exceptional this time, we're going to talk about health care. You yep. save the system a fortune. It used to be just the bar code on your arm. Yep. It's There's much more to it now. Yeah, we, we track... Uh, Almost anything you can say in, 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 in healthcare, but you know, wristbands on patients, uh, blood vials, blood bags, you know, any any kind of samples. But we also have provide uh, say mobile computers to to nurses. If you go back a few years, they tended to have a cart on wheels that they called mm -hmm. it. You know, they had a battery and a PC and scanners and everything. All of that is pretty much now in a mobile computer. And we put all, a lot of the voice communication, so we can have the PBX extension. We can have a kind of walkie-talkie, push-to-talk functionality to en enable them to talk to uh, you know their, their colleagues. I mean, I felt that when I read about what you've done and the, the incredible uh, yeah. decline in in operations you know, on the wrong arm, on the wrong yeah. leg, that the insurance companies would demand Zebra. Yeah. <laughs> not yet, huh? There's not still... yet. Not quite. <laughs> okay. Um, let's, let's, talk, let's go back to e-commerce. Uh, it is booming. Uh, retail is booming. You guys figure in, 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 in all aspects of it? Yeah, pretty much all aspects. So e-commerce, you know, they used a lot of our, our equipment to just be, you know, have a very fu efficient fulfillment mm -hmm. process. But uh, regular brick and mortar retailers have become very big uh, users of our type of solutions in, in, when they try to implement, say, an omni-channel strategy. Okay. Now, one thing that I was surprised about, and it was brought up in the call and I didn't know, you import a lot of stuff from China. 
and you said you had a working team that is ready. So if they go up to 25% in January, will you try to find other places to source? Is it that kind of thing? Yeah, so we have a team, a you know, cross-functional team that's looking at kind of all ways that we can mitigate. Uh, right. Yeah, Today, you know, the... the uh, the, what's been announced, so the first three right. lists, uh, it impacts only a very limited number of our products. Uh, so some of our scanners, uh, right. some of our accessories, uh, and we're looking at things like all the way from moving supply chains out of China to uh, you know, sourcing components wow. elsewhere. Really? Um, we're looking at, uh, you know, also, you know, how, you know, uh, including pricing, you know, that's also on the table. Wow. All right, one last thing, because, you know, I'm a football fan. We saw each other at the Super Bowl. Anything new just in terms of uh, trying to keep track of the fluids of an athlete, trying to keep – athletes cost a fortune. Yeah. And you're the only company that seems to be dedicated to the idea that these are – you know, I look, they're humans. Yeah. But they cost a fortune. You monitor everything. What are some of the new things you're monitoring? So we can, you know, we can monitor uh, you know, all their movements on the field, uh, how far, far fast they run, how far they run, you know, first quarter versus last quarter, uh, the ball, uh, the ball flight, uh, all the all the uh, all the referees and everything, and we, you know, we do have a, a free payload in the signal that we send back to include things like uh, you know biometric type of, of signals also. Does it go into the cloud or is it just straight directly? It, it goes into a server in the in the in the in the, in, in the first in the uh, stadium, and then right. it goes into a cloud from there. Fascinating. Yeah. Well, look, your company's <laughs> just doing incredibly yeah. well. I'm glad you have that mitigation thing going. Because yeah. I was worried that could hurt the quarter. Sounds yeah. like it's not going to. Thank you to Anders Gustafsson. He's the CEO of Zebra Technologies, a company that we have liked forever, and you see why it is doing so well. May have money, and it's well run. May have money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from May have Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.